Great, so welcome everyone this morning to uh, this NGIoT uh, initiative webinar, which is going to be looking at the open calls. Um, looking forward to having a great discussion today over the next couple of hours. I'll go through a few things. First of all, myself, my name is Brendan Rowan. I come from a company called Blue Specs. We are part of the coordination body behind the NGIT initiative. I'm joined here today by my colleagues from Martel, who are who, Valentin, who's helping lead on this as well. And we'll be guiding you through the session with the different projects uh, as we have it going on. A few housekeeping rules before we get into it. Um, so the first thing is a reminder that this is being recorded. Uh, so if you do not want to have your face or voice, uh, make sure you have your mic and camera muted. In fact, please have your mic and camera off uh, if you're not speaking it at any point within it. Um, the second thing is this is going to be live streamed on the Twitter belonging to the NGIOT account. Feel free to retweet it or share it. And the final thing is that the recording of this webinar will be available on the ngiot.eu um, site within a few days after this. So to go into it, why are we all here today? Uh, essentially, we're going to be looking at what are the open calls. For those of you who are unfamiliar, open calls are an opportunity for you to participate in the activities of different projects. It's a mechanism by which funding will be given to you to either help contribute towards the technology or help with the different deployments of technologies that happen within that area. Great opportunity to become part of a bigger community and to also really take advantage of the advances that these excellent, excellent projects are doing, which you'll find about later. Today, we're just going to give a quick overview in the first session uh, of what four projects, the four projects are doing and the opportunity for you to join. This will give you a chance to see which project best aligns with your different goals and the technology and solutions that your company offers. Then we will go into a session where previous uh, people who've participated in the NGIT open calls from different projects <clears throat> will be able to share with you their experience and to be able to ask them questions directly on essentially why would they bother getting involved in something like this and what was the benefits and how did they find it. After this first general session, we'll then break into two parallel sessions and this is where you will have the chance to go uh, one to one, not one to one, but into the different projects in that way. So when the projects are presenting at the beginning, do take note of which of the projects are most interesting to you. There'll be two opportunities to go into smaller parallel sessions with them. Um, you will be able to select and go in and uh, make sure that those sessions um, may be able to ask direct questions and get more detailed information that way. So just to highlight that again, session one is going to be an overview of which open calls are available, giving you an orientation in that way. Then we'll also hear from some of the previous winners of open calls from uh, both Intelliet and IT. Then the second part of this uh, webinar will be in parallel rooms. So there'll be a 20 minute session where you can look at one project, enter the room, find out more details. They will help to guide you through their specifics of their process. And you can ask any direct questions. And then we'll repeat that again. So you get a chance to go to two different, uh, two different uh, projects during this session. A quick overview of what is the NGIOT. So the Next Generation IoT is a collection of projects. It's an initiative that really is about building the foundation for what is the future of uh, technologies and especially IoT and edge technologies. Uh, as you see, there's a huge variety of different areas that are being looked at from interfaces to different types of AI, federated learning, building out a whole new systems and also taking advantage of what 5G has to offer. They are being applied in a smart cities context, ports, automotive, homes, healthcare, manufacturing and agriculture. And you'll hear some examples of those use cases today. And it consists of six projects uh, who are being supported by one coordinating project, EUIT. It's worth 48.5 million in total. So we're not talking about small money here. This is a big bet on future and we will be we are in the final year of, of this initiative in that way. It will move on to the Cloud Edge IoT continuum later. Um, also, you're more than welcome to join the IT Next Club to stay up to date with what's going on in these different initiatives, but the NGIT, the, e, the Cloud Edge IoT, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll share the link with that later as well. And finally, just the overview of the project. So totally, in total, we've got 3.75 million being 
issued out by these projects through open calls. Um, in the current round, you can expect to get between 60 and 100,000 euro for your project, 100% uh, funded in that way. And as you can see, there's some tight deadlines going on. So IT Engine is the first one at the end of this month, Assist IT in the middle of next month, Terminet, uh, fixed date, not there yet, but in November. And then finally, Intelios, who are going to be just launching their call next month. So we're having a bit of a sneak preview here today. So you're in good company there. And without that, I think I'm going to take away my screen and I'm going to hand over to Nacho, who's going to be the first one to present uh, from Assist IoT. So over to you, Nacho and Valentin for the screen share. Thank you very much, Brendan, and uh, hello to all. I am sorry, but I cannot share my face today. I do not have a camera here, but anyway, I hope that uh, you all know me. And if not, I hope we will know very soon when you apply for our open call funding. So uh, I guess I, I only have five minutes uh, today for posing briefly what our open calls opportunity consists of. So if you are so kind to advance in these slides, great. Uh, in a quick, quick, very good overview, Assist IoT is a project that aims at uh, delivering a next generation IoT architecture, bringing uh, natively concepts of the next generation IoT like uh, DLT, AI, augmented reality, etc., in a mod modular, adaptable, scalable, decentralized, uh, human centric, and interoperable architecture ecosystem consisted of uh, the integration of different key enablers, which are a combination of hardware and software for the new world of IoT with low latency capabilities. To demonstrate our product, our solutions, we are validating the technology in four different pilots in three different sectors. The sector of port automation in Malta with the terminal link, uh, the smart safety of workers in construction sites in Poland with the company Mostostal, and regarding the automotive sector with an actual car brought to us by Ford Germany, in which we have an open issue in which we are making some calibration and adjustments in the edge within the car, and also the um, detection of defects in the surface of vehicles through scanners with cameras and illumination. Next one, please. Regarding what is actually our, our open call, uh, this one is open now, closes on October 14th in more or less a month from now, is the second round of open calls we have, hold, have held. Uh, we held the first one at uh, the uh, beginning of this year, and it was successful with seven accepted proposals. And for this round, we will accept or we will fund eight proposals worth each of them of 60 thousand euros each a fixed quantity and it's open for uh, smes rto and universities to present individual projects according to the challenges we have defined uh, embedded or framed within our one of our pilots and the goal is to validate our technology and provide added values to those if you can advance Yes, this is a bit the explanation of what we are expecting and where, in which stage we are in about it. Uh, we published our second uh, opportunity for open calls during July and August, and it's open, as I have mentioned, till 14th of October at uh, 5 p.m. Uh, for applying to our, to our open call, you need to prepare a proposal of maximum of 15 pages and register yourself through a form that it's available on our website, in which, by the way, you will be able to find all information about how to apply, which are the rules, which are the challenges you need to apply for, uh, which are the technological scope of our project and to which technologies you will need to comply with depending on the type of the project, etc. Unfortunately, in this short presentation, I don't have the time to go in deep, in deep detail to uh, those uh, nuances, but everything is in the web. So if you can advance to the last slide, please, Valentin. Uh, as a recap, and uh, before passing the floor to other colleagues, you can apply to assist IoT funding in the open call for a fixed quantity of 60,000 um, euros, presenting an individual project if you are an SME, a university, or, or an RTO, by presenting a proposal of maximum 50 pages and informing through a form that's available on our website. In which you can find all you can find all the relevant details 
uh, to do it in the presentation, you also have the relevant links. So uh, I think that with this, uh, I, I conclude my, my presentation. In the next slide, you can find our uh, social media link, et cetera, if you want. Uh, everything is uh, published also in uh, NGIOT website. So thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much, Nacho. And just a reminder, you can, in the parallel sessions, if you want to find out more about Assist IoT, you can join that room and basically harass Nacho to give you all the answers to your questions. Um, so next up, then, if we can invite John Botbus from Terminet to present uh, the Terminet open call. Hello, good day to everyone. I'm John Bothos from uh, University of Western Macedonia, coordinator of the Terminate project. And I'm going to present the open call of the Terminate project. Uh, so let's proceed to the next slide. So uh, a few words about Terminate. Uh, Terminate is a project that aspires to provide a decentralized uh, next generation IoT reference architecture, which is based on uh, software defined networking, multiple edge access edge computing, and virtualization. And the scope is to provide uh, real time capable solutions and uh, enable a secure and privacy preserving IoT services user-aware solutions and semi, on semi-autonomous devices and semi-aware mechanisms. And uh, we support the technologies uh, that will be developed in uh, the distributed artificial intelligence and the new uh, generation of intelligent IoT devices within this, uh, virtualized, within this virtualized edge platform and cloud environment. These are the partners of the consortium. Uh, we have uh, uh, several research uh, partners, SMEs and uh, large industries. So we can proceed regarding the, the uh, project is uh, being applied uh, through uh, six uh, different uh, use cases. Uh, the first one uh, is focusing on uh, user-centric devices concerning smart farming. And the second uh, use case will be uh, applied uh, in the field of personalized health care. The third will be in the field of uh, sustainable and efficient buildings concerning uh, energy uh, saving uh, with uh, smart systems. Uh, the fourth uh, use case is about uh, uh, how we can optimize uh, the operation of supply chain in uh, manufacture of uh, dairy products. And the fifth uh, use case is about uh, uh, serious uh, gaming, how we can apply training surgery using uh, VR enabled IoT technologies. And the sixth is also uh, focusing on the manufacture uh, concerning the machine learning supporting maintenance and fault prediction uh, in critical infrastructures, uh, in IoT uh, components of critical infrastructures. So these are the six use cases that the Terminate project uh, technologies are developed for. We can proceed to the next. Uh, this is the architecture of the Terminate platform. Uh, it uh, consists of uh, several layers. We have the security and privacy which is a vertical layer concerning all the levels of the platform. We have the middleware layer concerning the collection and processing of the various data that, coming, that come from the various IoT devices at, at the physical level. Then we have the intelligence layer where we filter the data streams and uh, we applying the federated learning uh, approach. Then we have the platform where we integrate all the uh, all the below 
preferred technologies. Uh, with, we enhanced the virtualization user interface. We develop uh, global AI models and uh, also data management and storage technologies. And then we finally go to the application layer to provide through cloud uh, a wide uh, spectrum of services. We can proceed. So regarding the open call of Terminate project, uh, it is uh, seeking uh, uh, for uh, the seeking assistance for uh, these four specific topics. The first one is to uh, deploy services across the edge computer and uh, Internet of Things nodes and the software defined networking. The second is to uh, provide uh, models, security models by design. Uh, regarding uh, authentication frameworks for mobile IoT devices and edge nodes. The third is about the security and privacy of blockchain technologies. And the fourth uh, concerns the federated models and machine learning algorithms uh, that could come from different do domains and uh, they can be involved uh, in the validation and demonstration of the terminate use cases. So we can proceed. So the, in order to be more specific, the first uh, topic is uh, regarding this. Sorry to interrupt, John. Um, I think just, just in terms of time, I think you can go over this in your parallel session. If you could maybe just go to the end where you have the deadlines and how to apply. Okay, okay, proceed. Okay. Valentine, to the last slide, to the deadlines. Yes, yes. There you go. Perfect. Here we are. No, the f previous, here. So the call uh, has opened from September, this September. It will, the deadline for the submission of proposals is at the end of October. And uh, we will notify the selected applicants by middle of November and the projects will start at the latest uh, in the beginning of January. Uh, each project will have a duration of four to six months. There is a there is a total uh, budget of four hundred thousand uh, euros, uh, and each open call will receive uh, one hundred thousand uh, euros. Excellent. Thank you very much, John. And uh, again, you. if anyone's going to detail of those use cases and the opportunities and the parallel sessions in the, in the parallel groups there. Yes, of course. So we just, are available for any yeah. further information might be needed. Perfect. Thank you very much, John. Um, and then moving on, then we have Demetrius from IoT Engines. So Demetrius is the one with the most urgency because his call is finishing at the end of the month. So you've got two weeks to get it in. Yep. Exactly. Hello, everybody. My name is Dimitrios uh, Skias, I'm representing the company Intersoft, and we are, I am the open call coordinator for the IoT Engine project. So IoT Engine project and this age is to create the next generation so-called IoT platform, uh, delivering a variety of technologies. If you can see from the next slide where the architecture is, so you can proceed with animation. And uh, this is um, the functional uh, stack, let's say, realized through our platform, just to give you um, an overview of the technologies and of the relevant components realized in, in each sector. So from the bottom up, you can see the 5G network related components, including, uh, for example, components for 5G slicing and 5G network management. And above from there, we have the microservices area of uh, the microservice application developed there. Here we have a secure execution environment for the unikernel uh, components. And also we have uh, uh, the uh, components with respect to uh, focusing to IoT cybersecurity. Uh, this includes, for example, the vulnerability detection and uh, Honeypot framework that we develop. From there, we have the data, federated data sovereignty uh, layer. Here is uh, actually components that uh, are responsible for the security and for the communication and the federation. 
Uh, this uh, includes components such as the digital twin, the blockchain uh, technology that is realized with, uh, uh, through the uh, distributed ledger. Um, and um, what else we have here? And we have also sensing and actuating components. From there, a bit uh, up, we have big data analytics relevant components, such as we real realize here technologies such as the privacy preserving federated learning. Uh, and also uh, the machine learning as a service. And we have also a last group of uh, components relevant to augmented reality and a human-centered um, user interface. Uh, so if we move to the next slide really quick, uh, those components uh, will be available to SMEs that are active in IoT application development. So we ask for SMEs to apply through our second open call in order to extend and validate our components and integrate with them. So the total amount for each SME is up to 75,000 euros. Um, if we move to the next slide. Thank you. So uh, as Brendan said, our, our second open call uh, op um, ends at 13th of uh, September. And the total funding offered through this open call is uh, 450,000 euros. The submissions are available through and supported by f Success, And you can see the, full, the link uh, below. And in total, 10 participants will be selected. So a brief overview of the process we can uh, see in the next slide uh, of, the, uh, of, the, of the process of the involvement, actually, that uh, the, uh, the open call participants will uh, have to realize. So now we are in the submission phase, and afterwards we have uh, the evaluation phase. So this is a funnel approach, actually, for the projects. So initially, 10 projects will be selected to enter the application design phase where they will provide us um, some uh, the design of their application, uh, business plan, and maybe a mock-up. Then six of those projects will be uh, forwarded to this experiment phase where they will implement this uh, MVP, which translates as the minimum viable product, and try integrating and testing and uh, validating through our living clubs. And uh, the final project, the three projects uh, will also get promoted to the next phase that's about dissemination exploitation, uh, that each project will receive 5,000 euros. And the top performer, let's say, as a reward, will get an additional 5,000 euros. Um, the validation process will take place through four living clubs that realized within a UTNG project uh, that is Smart City, Smart Industry, Smart Agriculture. Um, uh, what else? Um, yeah, those uh, those uh, living clubs, and the, in the next slide you can see relevant links that you can uh, visit in order to get more information. So the first one concerns open call information and relevant documentation. The second one is about the deliverables that describe its uh, the various components that you have to know uh, how to integrate your solutions. And the third link is uh, for the submission process, and we have also code repository available in open source code through the last link. Thank you for your attention, and I wish to see you in the following session in order to give you more details on components and all the living clubs and whatever might interest you. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you very much, Dimitris. And uh, as you say, a great opportunity to get one-to-one -one information from you and, and back and forth. And then finally, um, we go to Intelliot, which is still not open. So hush, hush, uh, pre, a pre, uh, preview into the open call from Marin. So Marin, over to you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I think um, uh, I'm also good diving a little deeper if you want to uh, share my slides about what we do. So it's um, easier for everybody that um, is interested in joining the open call to also differentiate between uh, the projects. I think we're all aiming for, um, you know, the next generation of IoT. And if you move to the next slide, um, you will see that the um, are quite comparable. I brought a video so you get an understanding what use cases we're working on and how we are structured. Um, if you could Smart technologies do that. play a big role in our life and work. However, the traditional approach, based on cloud technologies, has limitations such as unreliable connectivity, limited bandwidth, long reaction. So I think we all deal with the same concerns. problems and try to solve it in a different way. The goal way of in the project is to tackle these issues and create a framework enabling next generation IoT solutions for a variety of sectors. Intelliot stands for Intelligent IoT. We are a pan-European research project funded by the European Union as part of the Next Generation Internet of Things programme. Our technical framework is based on three pillars, collaborative IoT, human in the loop and trustworthiness. We use modern technologies 
such as edge computing, 5G, and AI, and apply them to machines. This enables machines to collaborate semi-autonomously and notify humans when their task is interrupted. The information flow between machines and humans is secured and reliable. Intelliot will demonstrate the developed framework in three industries, agriculture, manufacturing, and healthcare. In the agriculture use case, we apply the framework to a farming vehicle. After being equipped with intelligent technology, a vehicle is able to perform tasks like plowing or spraying a field without a person in the driver's seat. When the vehicle faces an obstacle and needs support, a human operator is notified. Then, using remote technology, a human can control the actions of the smart machine. The AI enables the vehicle to learn from the interaction to overcome future similar scenarios. The Intelliant framework can be applied in manufacturing to make customized production more efficient. After receiving product data, an intelligent environment creates an optimized production plan based on a smart contract, selects the machines and transport paths. When the autonomous process is interrupted, technology notifies a human operator. Through AR technology, the operator takes control and reviews the problem. AI trains itself in the background to avoid similar situations in the future. The Intelliot approach can be used to modernize the healthcare sector. Our solution enables the remote monitoring of the recovery and rehabilitation progress of cardiovascular disease patients. A smart wearable device can continuously track relevant health data and give recommendations. When professional intervention is needed, it can securely notify a physician to intervene. We are going to conduct two open calls for mature startups and SMEs. Several new partners will have a chance to join the project and receive up to 150,000 euro in funding. Together with the 13 current partners, they will enhance the three existing use cases, as well as expand the application domains using Intelliant Technologies. For more information and updates, go to our website, www.intelliant.eu so yes, um, and also sign up to the next slide. Um, why, did we, did we, why did we why uh, we show the the uh, video as well because um, it's supposed to inspire you to find solutions in the areas um, that are most relevant to us now. Um, as you learned, we already had an open call, um, and we also um, will meet one of the winners from the open call later on um, from the company I know how. Um, in the first open call, we focused on you know working on the three use cases that we brought in in the second open call. Um, we will focus on three new domains, but uh, what all the, the challenges have in common is we focus on collaborative IoT, human in the loop, and trustworthiness as the three main pillars. And in the second open call, we are going to provide um, open source technology that we have developed. Um, more than 20 components will be available for you uh, to be used um, and uh, to be applied. So we will basically build on the first open call and hopefully also empower um, small and mid-sized companies uh, to use what we have learned in the past and, and apply it um, in their real-life scenarios. Um, I'm not going deeper into that. This is something we can talk at the water once and maybe Valentin, if you could switch uh, to the next slide. So the next uh, uh, sectors domains we are focusing on are energy, construction, and smart city. Um, if you remember semi-autonomous driving in the agricultural environment and smart city, there are a lot of similarities. Um, if you remember the smart manufacturing use case, you know, obstacles that need to be moved around. This is something that you can see in, in construction and in energy, you can smart, you can see smart grids, um, but also the topic of trustworthiness for sure is a topic. Um, in this open call, we will support six SME. We are not supporting consortia. We are not supporting academic institutions. We are supporting smaller mid-sized um, companies with uh, 60,000 euros. It will be six companies we are going to support. And we will also move into technical pilot projects that most likely have a length of four months um, and will start um, in the beginning of next year, most likely in February. If you move on to the next slide. Um, so the funding rate again will be 100%. This is something that I think Brandon also pointed out. Um, and we would love to have candidates that also ensure that the components that we bring in and they apply will be applicable um, after September 2023, because again, we also want to share it across Europe with other SME and not just support the companies that are part of the open call. Um, I think there is a last slide um, with some information. Um, yes, um, we do have a guide for applicants. 
we will open our application on the 1st of October. It will run for two months um, till the 1st of December. Um, in the guide of applicants, it will be um, on the website. You get all the details. And we also have an application via F6S. That's a platform that a lot of you have used already before. So there's a questionnaire to be filled out. Um, and um, everything that is needed in the application is described in the guide for applicants, which is usually a 40 page uh, document that you can also go into. But I think, I think what's also important is in this guide for applicants, there's also a detailed explanation. What are the criteria we apply to actually decide which company um, is the winning one or what other evaluators care about? So you can also adjust your application based on the specific needs that we have described in that. And yes, um, two months give you ample time uh, to actually do that. And you know, starting from now, you could actually also think about if our open call is something for you. And um, there's, a, I think, a very last slide at the end with um, some email as well. Um, so if you go to italia.eu or send us an email, um, we will also share the information as soon as they are available. But there will be a separate website that is going to go online, I think, on the 29th of September right in time so we can start the open call on a Saturday because the 1st of October is a Saturday. If you do have more questions, feel free to ask in the 101 sessions later on. Excellent, thank you very much, Madam. So uh, we have received an overview more or less of all the different projects and what the offering is in there. I think as Madam has, has kind of pointed out, it's a question of figuring out which one fits best with your company in that way. Um, to give a bit of background and experience to people who've gone through this process already, we've invited three um, speakers who, who are from SMEs and, and who have already participated in these open calls. So if I could first ask um, Elizabeth uh, from Dotsoft to, to kind of come onto the stage. Um, and Elizabeth, if you'd like to share with everyone here a bit of, bit of background to what your company does. Um, why was the open call interesting for you how did you find out and kind of what's your experience been so far and just says which project your open call was for as well yes hello uh, my name is uh, elizabeth i represent uh, dotsoft dotsoft is a company based in uh, greece uh, northern greece in Thessaloniki. it's an ict company uh, specializing in um, applications for uh, mobile applications in uh, solutions for smart cities uh, and, and also is uh, involved in R&D projects uh, for um, uh, IoT, energy, um, and health, etc. In, uh, in Greece and abroad. Um, so first of all, why did we participate in uh, this open call? Now this, uh, excuse me, this open call uh, seemed like an excellent opportunity for us to refine. Um, and uh, also progress um, further our approach towards uh, occupational safety using IoT. The specific project is uh, called uh, Smart Sonia. It's a solution that helps, uh, that is focused for the construction uh, uh, sector. Uh, it's, uh, it's implemented uh, along with the use case in Poland for a construction company is that uh, we monitor the health status and the overall um, brain status and how uh, how workers feel and how whether they are okay while they perform several tasks uh, at work, especially when uh, they are uh, at high levels, a high floor uh, at, at heights. So the uh, the risk of injury is uh, a bit raised. So what we want to do is monitor uh, their health and uh, provide some uh, alerts and interventions when possible. Uh, about uh, towards them uh, as well as towards the manager or the safety and health manager at the site so that they can be more careful or even take a break and continue later. So we participated in uh, uh, this uh, uh, open call because it looked like an excellent opportunity to refine the approach. We already had um, improved uh, and uh, we already had a proof of concept through another project, another R&D. So uh, the technologies and the overall solution seemed uh, to, to fit perfectly. And uh, the, uh, the fact that there is a multinational and uh, pan-European and um, 
a set of experts from uh, that can provide us with mentoring and supervision over the this um, project is of, is is of great value. Now we found out about this um, a call through the internet because uh, we are also very much interested in uh, this kind of calls. We are part of a network of networks that uh, provides us with uh, a list of all the announcements about open calls. So it was quite easy to um, to get access to a, the announcement about the open call. Uh, the process of application was so. Uh, uh, very much crystal clear. It was concise. It was fast. Uh, the, doc the set of documents and the guidelines were uh, to the point that uh, not too much in volume, so it was very clear uh, for both the PDF, the, the guides, as well as the online documents that uh, they were okay. So uh, we didn't. I don't think we had any issue, and uh, we felt very comfortable in uh, asking for any advice or any uh, issues that. We didn't. Uh, we, we wanted to clarify, and um, uh, as far as uh, what does it mean for us to be part of the project and the NGIOD? Uh, first of all, it helps us um, um, realize uh, the overall strategy of our uh, company to uh, to develop new uh, products and solutions. Uh, uh, in the field of IoT, so that we can uh, still uh, serve our clients uh, with the solutions we we already have, but we want to drive new solutions as well, and uh, actually um, showcase these solutions to the customers, the the municipalities or uh, private customers, and uh, it's also a great value for us to uh, as a prestige uh, um, element to. Um, to be able to be part of this uh, NGIOD hub uh, in in the market in general. So this is our general experience through this uh, through our uh, involvement in the project. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Um, and as I said, any questions, uh, people, please put them in the chat um, for Elizabeth or for any of our speakers now. But thank you just to summarize a little bit. So, you you know, for you, you saw it as an opportunity to really prove something that you had in-house and needed to get to the next stage. You were able to access the networks across different countries in Europe and demonstrate it. And it's a great opportunity to then, as you say, be part of a broader network and, and, and increase your branding and your, your visibility and, and show that you're at leading edge of IoT solutions. So thank you very much for sharing with us today uh, and for joining us today. Please hang around. There's more open calls you can apply for. So uh, <laughs> um, I'd like to then hand over to uh, Ines from, from Ubiware. So joining us from Porto or Coimbra. I can never remember where you guys are based. Ines? No, we don't have an S. Um, so we'll go straight on then to Nikos. So going back to uh, Greece. So Nikos from I Know How. So Nikos, would you like to share with everyone here a bit about what I Know How does? Um, why were you attracted to the open call? Or how was the process? And kind of what would you share with anyone else who's, so your learnings and advice for anyone who's thinking of applying for one of these open calls? Good morning. Good morning, Juan. Thank you very much uh, for the invitation. Uh, I hope you can hear me fine. Um, so uh, I know how it's a, also a big company. Uh, was founded in 2002. Uh, we are around 100 people, and uh, the biggest part of the company deals with digital transformation. Now, specifically, my business unit deals with robotics. So we are developing our own precision agriculture robot. And in that frame, we are always looking uh, forward. So what is the next thing we need to develop uh, for our prototype in order to become like a fully fledged product? And uh, based on our needs, we are looking for funding opportunities. And uh, this is how we came up uh, to Intelia IoT, where they also have like a smart agriculture use case. And there they had some very specific needs. And uh, these needs met our needs. So our story and rationale is very similar to Elizabeth, uh, what she described. So we are in the process of, of you know, reaching a very high TRL of uh, prototyping uh, our prototype. And uh, we need to like to plug holes. 
Uh, one such example, for example, was like a remote operation using uh, VR. That was like on our radar. And uh, we saw from the open call from the Intel OT that it was something that they also working on. So it was like a great opportunity to form uh, a proposal around the different things like the remote operation using the virtual reality or like creating a, a farmer's logbook or trying to operate the whole thing over 5G. Um, so we described all that uh, in the application and we were selected. And uh, since then, since uh, six months now, we have been working with them, which has been like a, a great experience. Uh, we felt from the right, right in the beginning that we had to offer a lot uh, to the consortium. And we also were very confident that the consortium had uh, to take a lot from us. So it was like a win-win situation. Um, we, how did we find the open calls? Uh, I think like there are like several uh, channels currently. Elizabeth mentioned like a network of networks uh, where they send you uh, all this information. Like there are several sites online which do that. There is also the official European Commission uh, portal where all open calls uh, are being submitted. So with one quick look, uh, you can see what's open, uh, what's about to close uh, and all the information. And nowadays, everybody is very active in social media. Uh, that's LinkedIn and uh, uh, Twitter and Facebook. If I remember correctly, we found Intelio IT uh, through uh, LinkedIn. I'm not entirely sure. I think it was LinkedIn. From there, we went to the site. Uh, Marion already said that for the next open call, which will open the 1st of October, uh, they will have the site operational uh, at the end of the month. And then we found all the information we needed. The most important thing, uh, it's the guide for applicants. Uh, it's usually like a 40, 50 document, uh, uh, 40, 50 pages document, which describes everything you need to know in order to see if your ideas fit with what the project would like to fund and how you need to form your application and how you need to submit it. All the information is there. On top of that, there is also information like the webinar you're just doing here, which is recorded and will be online afterwards. So we also had a look uh, at that webinar. And uh, also there is always, always a mail available for any extra questions that are not covered online. So the process of application was really straightforward. Uh, we had a very concrete idea of what we'd like to offer and what we'd like to get, and we just wrote it down. So it was really straightforward. And also the whole um, application, after the whole uh, process after the submission was straightforward. So we were notified, we went through a due diligence interview, and uh, from that point on, we were selected. So really stress-free. Uh, what does it mean for us to be part of a project? Uh, uh, it, it really uh, opens up our network. It gives us the opportunity to test new technologies and exchange know-how. And uh, when you are trying like, to finalize your prototype into a product, like, these three things are really of top priority in order like, to be able to make the right decisions, uh, speed up uh, implementation, and really uh, come to a point where you can say that you have a project. This is all from me. I will be very happy also to participate in future open calls. Thank you, Nikos. And, and, and what's your kind of word of advice for anyone who's interested in applying an open call and hasn't applied before? It's like have a concrete idea and really, really go through all the pages in the guide for applicants. Like all the information is there. Don't miss anything. Uh, it's really like the holy Bible of uh, submitting. Excellent. Thank you very much, Nikos. Um, and I believe, Ines, are you here? I think you're, you're able to speak. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, perfectly, okay. Ines. So would you like to guide us through a bit about what UbiWare does? Um, why did you apply to the Assist IT Open Call? Um, what does it mean for you? And kind of what advice would you have for anyone else who's thinking of applying? Okay. Uh, so... Uh, Ubiware is a research, first of all, <laughs> good morning, everyone. Ubiware is a research and innovation SME based in Portugal, uh, developing innovative and user-centered software solutions. Uh, so since 2007, Ubiware has fostered a culture of innovation and creativity by delivering solutions uh, that its clients need to succeed. 
Uh, from idea to product, it will be where focus on the research and development of innovative and sustainable uh, technolo technological solutions for smart cities, telecom, and Internet of the Future. Um, in different areas such as mobility, environment, tourism, energy, and many more. Ubiware actively participates in these research and development initiatives to foster collaboration with the most relevant European stakeholders working in the company's strategic areas, while lowering the risk linked to innovation with European Union funding and technical support. Uh, this enables Ubiware to develop new ideas and, and features, bringing them to the market as new functionalities or novel solutions in a sustainable uh, manner. One of our products is the City Nervous System, that is a solution capable of transmitting signals everywhere to coordinate the actions in the city if efficiently. So uh, City Nervous System offers a necessary technology to, the, to upgrade uh, street furniture like lampposts, cabinets, with uh, wireless computing networking, storage and uh, administration uh, capabilities, turning it into a neutral hosting and edge computing platform for 5G deployments, implementation, uh, implementation of IoT and EV charging. With a vast experience in smart cities market, Ubiware has been looking for opportunities like this uh, to work uh, on the digitization of ports and solve specific challenges in their management and logistics. So Assist IoT uh, open call was uh, the perfect opportunity for, for us. Um, how did we find the, the this open call? So um, we were as an extensive uh, uh, experience in collaborative and international projects from European Union uh, program, uh, having grown its network uh, of partners uh, extensively throughout the, the last years. Moreover, um, with interoperability in mind via standardization and normalization activities, we were as actively cooperates with several uh, European um, and international references, uh, associations like 5GPP, Fireware, Etsy, etc. Um, so we discovered this open call thanks to our network of partners via direct contacts and their uh, project dissemination initiatives. Uh, to process uh, the of the process of application was uh, not uh, easy, but the application process was straightforward since most of the material was available online on the project website. We started by analyzing the different available challenges, foco focusing on the um, project support pilots and use cases. After finding a challenge aligned with the company strategy, we analyzed the call uh, evaluation criteria and the relevant material required for this application, like tools available for open call participants or use cases already being explored, etc. Uh, we start to draft our idea for the challenge. Uh, we tried to ensure that our idea and proposal presented a well-defined roadmap for exploitation while proposing a clear approach to help solve challenges pr uh, presented by the Assist IoT Consortium. We also did our best not to leave the submission until the last minute and the submission <laughs> went smoothly via email. Um, what means for us to be part of this project? Our vision is to become an international reference in smart cities and future of internet, which is the main reason for participating in R&D initiatives of Assist IoT Open Calls. Uh, being part of the project allows us to develop and validate at an early stage a novel idea that makes logistic operation much more efficient in ports and other critical settings. It means 
we can cooperate with organizations working on a state-of-the-art IoT solutions for this type of business and take the opportunity to co-create a new application with potential end users, promoting our experience with a broader audience and achieving a greater impact. Excellent. Thank you very much, Ines. And is your advice to everyone, don't leave it last minute? Or is there, what, what's your main piece of advice? Uh, I think the the advice is the the only advice that I have is that you have a well defined uh, idea and uh, a roadmap for you to to for you to can guide uh, all the projects. Perfect. Thank you very much, and thank you very much to everyone who's joined us. So, from Nikos to Elizabeth and Ines, thank you the three of you for joining and sharing with everyone else your experiences and giving a bit of a flavour as to why uh, open calls are interesting for companies when there's a good alignment, when there's clear ideas, and when you don't leave it to the last minute. <laughs>